Greetings my friends and welcome to a brand new nation's guide and today we're going to be looking at Westphalia. Now in this particular uh, guide we're going to be looking at a number of um, different points of interest uh, to do with this campaign. First of all we're going to look at uh, location, we're going to be looking at what is available to us in terms of infrastructure, so uh, for example our eco economic infrastructure, our military infrastructure, research, um, we're going to be looking at our surrounding allies and enemies. We're going to be looking at potential uh, strategic and tactical m sort of positioning we can move against who our future enemies might be and how future um, allies might be. And where sort of West Westphalia stands within the grand scheme of things here within. Because you can see the location here. It is, you know, a slap bang in the middle of western sort of Europe or sort of, you know, western European pushing towards central Europe it's on that sort of border there between there's quite a lot going on around around us here, huge amount of wars um, will probably break out, there's a number of enemies that will appear but there's also a number of allies that will also appear probably unexpected allies will uh, appear as well, we're looking at trade economics, um, future expansions, things like that, but as you can see we're sort of landlocked um, here with Westphalia, there are no ports, so most of your trade is going to be done with near neighbours. But also, we're going to be looking at you know what the sort of the, the trade options are to you in the future, and where you might need to expand to be able to gain additional trade. Basically, what we're looking to do, we're looking to do with Westphalia is, ex is to take territories that give you access to ports. That really is absolutely crucial. But the first thing we need to do is to look at what you start off with. Now just briefly on a side note before I start, I was intending to do a uh, Wittenberg, uh, Wittenberg here um, uh, nation's guide. Unfortunately for some reason there is a bug that does not allow you to actually uh, click on any of the buildings. It basically is a fog of war when you click on Wittenberg to sort of try and sort of access the facilities which are available when you come to the campaign map. You can't actually access the buildings, you can't actually see anything, you can't click on any of the buildings. It's basically f a w fog of war, sort of, so if you look over here, you can't click on any of the buildings here. You basically, that's what happens here, even though you can select Wittenberg, you can't actually play it for some reason. I, th I believe it's a long-standing bug within um, Darth Mod that has never been sort of corrected. So, um, if you're wondering why Wittenberg has never been, or will never be sort of a part of nation's guide, I'll probably do a brief um, sort of synopsis of, of Wurttemberg, but no, if you're running Darth Maul, especially Platinum, the brand new Platinum sort of version of it, you will never be able to play Wurttemberg, um, unless it might, there might be a mod out there that might unlock it. But unfortunately, as far as Darth Mod is concerned, you can't actually access um, Wittenberg. Although you can see it here, but when you come to actually play it yourself, you can't access it. So I do apologise if any of those, those you might be looking forward or wanting me to do Wittenberg. Um, unfortunately, it is not accessible to play <coughs> or to sort of use or to even look at at any time. It's completely fogged out. But my friends, back on to Westphalia here as I digress there. Now, as you can see, you do start out with a, a, a very, very healthy dose of production here. It really is a fine region to start with. Probably one of the finest small nations. You can see there are a number of sort of individual nations, individual regions, sort of all within what would be Latter-day Germany now, as you can see in the Rhineland of Cologne here. So we have available to us farmlands. We also have the craft workshops. Uh, again, you've got a, a already a wonderful sort of uh, economic base and also a wonderful industrial base to start off with. That, of course, you can move down to Weaver's Cottage here, uh, which is all, which gives you 562. But at the moment, you've got you're getting 375 to regional wealth, and you're also getting plus seven uh, turn uh, plus seven per turn to town wealth as well. That's not too bad at all from that singular building there. We have a look at what this brings. So it's again population growth, 125 to regional wealth. Also opens up unlocks this research here for yourselves, reduces food shortages, which is crucial, especially with a smaller nation. Then of course we have here, right on the border of Hanover here, of which is of course allied as you might have spotted there my friends. You, you start off with a craft workshop, which is unusual for the smaller nations to actually start with a craft workshop because they can bring in huge amounts of money as you can see, a plus 500 to regional wealth and plus 6 per turn to town wealth in the region, which is exceptional. Of course moving down to Iron Workshop, which is absolutely unlocks a huge amount of very important research, measuring tools, 
coke blast furnace and basic steam pump are really the sort of quintessential uh, research you want to try and establish as quickly as possible outside of military research but again we'll dip into that later on and then of course here you will you, you start off with an un sort of an unready or un sort of unconstructed um, iron mine here but for some reason you can pour money into that and I would definitely recommend pouring money into that um, as you get straight away you get 700 regional wealth and I you can't really go any further than this after sort of after that so again this would be but once steam pumps come on online you then you'll be able to access sort of steam pump iron mines which really will boost probably over to the thousand to regional wealth there so that really is important you do that we also can start here with a coaching in um, which is excellent for recruiting as you can see western european mercenaries which again will be important but also rakes and also plus two happiness lower classes again important but probably the single most important building and cons sort of construction you could possibly have here is in here in Marburg which is the college a wonderful start to have it really is the the ability to have research right from the off is absolutely crucial it really really is and for 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 Westphalia to have so much production and also have a college as well really does set it on a firm footing straight from the off so you've already gone past school it's already gone up from school it's gone already to, to college and if so minus five to ha minus five to happiness of course camera for reform but look at the research here points 13 sponsor gentlemen as well also opens up this production you know this research here of utilitarianism government by consent and division of labor. Now, division of labor is really important because you can see it can boost wealth here by industrial buildings and because you have so many industrial buildings that really is one of the key research areas you want to really try and focus on later down the line. But as you can see you're already starting off with some phenomenal production, some phenomenal economic uh, facilities but also um, pr sort of mineral sort of wealth as well as you can already start off with un untapped mineral wealth but it's there if you want to throw some money at it and that is really vital for such a small nation or should I say a region to have such a, a strong economic base because of course the Rhine really was and is a very sort of powerful um, sort of production center industrial s sort of heartland of Germany as it, w it is, as it is it really does sort of reflect that within this region so um, as you can see here, so sort of we go to Cologne itself. Uh, Cologne is not a sort of under um, civilian administration, as it were. It is a military governor's sort of barracks and encampment here, moving down to gov military governor's barracks. So already you're on that sort of war footing, as it were, that militaristic footing. But look what you can get from here. It is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I kid you not, my friends. Look at this. We shall dip into the military side of this, since we are sort of flowing quite nicely from the barracks that are already there. The main hub of um, Cologne is military. So as you can see, you start off with uh, Prince Jason. I, straight away I'm, I'm going to apologize for any mispronunciations here of any sort of German uh, regimental names not my intent to offend anybody my friends but pronunciation is appalling so we've got Prince Jesen Jesenberg here infantry you've got Bear, Bear infantry regiment I mean look at this von Heim Jaegers I'm, I'm we're just going to call this uh, Kroza Grenz regiment I'm not going to pronounce the rest for fear of offending and um, of course you've got provincial cavalry which is standard um, so of course this is us moving up so to start with we'll go from what we start with the military governor's encampment so straight away you get uh, von Militz cavalry you're going to be looking at militia uh, landwehr militia provincial cavalry so they are the basic units these units without the red around them if you've got red circle around this particular sort of inventory unit it means you need research to unlock it so as you can see here to unlock this um, Schaumburger, Leap, Bakerberg, Jaegers, you need light infantry doc doc doctrine. Again, Prince Ludwig, Ernst Dragoons, you need carbines, um, failed Jaeger, so we'll just call a failed Jaeger, a you need machine rifling, uh, 12 pounders, you need, of course, canister shot, and again, um, Heston Dragoons, you need carbines as well. So again, you need, you, you've got that trade off, you've got some wonderful units down the line, but you need to sort of really put that that time and effort into the research to be able to unlock them. Some of the research will take a while to get to, some of it you can get to straight away. But let's have a look what, sort of because you aren't able to build 
um, a sort of a quintessential barracks. There isn't a city here. You don't have it like a, like Amsterdam is a city, a full on a full city state. You're basically al able to have access to different layers of um, technology and different layers of uh, barracks, which open up a significant amount because you're a singular region. They've you've got military barracks you can move down to 3,000 a worthy investment it really is because look what it opens up here as we're sh saying here we've got the named regiments we we'll call these the named regiments here and then of course you move down you've got provincial cap then you can get line infantry um, you get Karlstad, Lecane, Lecana, Red, uh, Grenadiers, a basic Grenadier regiment um, and also you get the standard Landivir militia as well of course you've got von Militz here as well more militia but again, you do open up with some some decent units here. Look at that, actually 45. Expensive, very expensive, but the defense is 16. Excellent. Morale is high as well, which is always a boon. It really is. Charge bonus on the bear infantry is much better here for some reason. But the melee attack is poorer. So some of the troops are more are better at charging, others are better at, at melee attack. So again, that is just slight adjustments, but still something to take care, take note of just in for the future use against provincial cavalry. You've got the uh, Croza regiments here. Oh my goodness me, that is a wonder to see. And fairly cheap. We get 225 men here, only 105, so they are light infantry, but again, their accuracy is exceptional here. So they would be superb in front of the, this, or even setting traps in the field in the battle there. Cavalry is standard. Von Millet's cavalry, now what is the difference here? Uh, a, a, a large difference there, melee attack is much better. The charge bonus is not as good, but the defense is very, very good. And also the morale is much higher again. Wonderful to see they're expensive, nearly a thousand gold. But upkeep costs not too much too bad there, but again a wonderful sort of cavalry unit to have there. Militia. Militia is good if you need that sort of depth, so you need quantity rather than quality. If you want to sort of um you know, sort of bunch out patch out your sort of units, your armies as it were. Um they are a, a, a very, very good unit to have there, just to serve maybe even as a reinforcement if some of your lines are coming under certain pressure. You can put some militia in to sort of feed in those reinforcements, keep cycling those reinforcements in. I've got line infantry as well, again, which is, except the melee defense here is pretty good. Got to be fair here. Again, standard sort of uh, line infantry statistics here. And we've got the Karlstadt here. Again, light infantry. Wonderful accuracy there, it really is. Ammunition, yeah, ammunition, much, much larger ammunition, so they can carry more ammunition to battle. Excellent there, and the land veer. Oh, actually, it's 34. That's actually pretty good. They are they expensive though. My word, that is expensive. We get 300 men. So again, they're, they're well-trained militia soldiers. So again, they can fight very, very well, almost probably up to the standard of line infantry if they're used in the right context. So again, that's what you get, that's the basics as you get here, that's as much as you're going to probably get in terms of um, what you can do with your research. As you can see here, the Von Militz, you get Provincial Cavalry, you get uh, Western European uh, Infantry Mercenary, which is good as well, Landwehr and Militia. Infrastructure, of course, you've got basic roads, we're looking at tr probably getting cobble roads up as quickly as possible. Remember, that infrastructure is so vital, especially for single region um, nations here. It really is important that you get the infrastructure up and running so that when you're sort of got the uh, overland trade, you need that to be moving in as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible, and that will therefore give you much more money as well. Um, your army you start with is very small indeed. Um, you've got urns, pelser here, then you've got pikemen and militia. That's all you've got to start with. So normally you'll have a cannon, you'll have um, some cavalry. Not on this, not with this, but this particular time you've got nothing at all to start with there at all. You've got three, two units and a, and a, and a general. So that again, very, very small. It's going to be crucial, therefore, that you establish quite a strong defensive force being a single nation a single region you need to get up a strong defensive force maybe before anything else maybe before even investing in any technologies here maybe the only thing would be the mines to give you that additional boost to income but my, my sort of my advice would be if i was particularly playing this campaign i would definitely look to increase 
the size of my military force, the defensive force, as quickly as I possibly can, S especially with the nations that are surrounding you, especially here in the West. But we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit soon deeper. Now, of course, you start with a uh, rake here, uh, Adolf Friedlander. Any special traits? No, indeed not. But he's 29, so still young to, to improve. And also Peter Mehring here. No traits, but again, my advice, put this gentleman immediately into the, into, the, into the college and get your spy working out to the west here because this is where the larger nations are. Spain and France are already to the west of you. And indeed, Strasbourg here and the French armies will be bordering on this small border here. And as you'll find out later, my friends, France are not particularly a very good neighbour. Now, let's have a closer look here at what we've got. Start off with 7,500. Not too bad at all, not too shabby at all there, my friends, but not a great deal either. Remember, picking your sort of targets in terms of where you spend your money really is crucial here. It's m much more vital in th in a sort of a, a smaller nation, in a single region nation than it is in any other because if you've got something like France or Spain or Britain you've got lots of different options where you spend your money, where you can invest your money, you've got time you can make time for yourselves by sort of putting money into army and also build, sort of putting into the uh, infrastructure you've got not only at home but also in abroad which brings in a much more money for you. Single regions don't have that. You have to focus, you have to concentrate your resources and also have that balance, that equilibrium between military spending. So say you, you produce three units, it's therefore equally as crucial that you then spend money on economic power, on sort of economic maybe into production. So example, say we say we so we built or we recruited four units here from Cologne, like three line infantry, one cavalry. Therefore, you could then balance that spending out by sort of bringing more income in because you've spent more money. So you want to balance that spending with income. Then maybe you want to invest in line workshops which will bring in 750, but also increase, increase the town wealth as well to the region by eight. So again, you spent money, but then you've also bringing that money you've just spent, you're balancing it out by spending it on economic e sort of income and taxes further down the road. And that applies to anything. Whatever you're gonna do, always have the balance. There's no point in building a full stack army, finding yourself bankrupt three or four turns down the line, because that will just do you no good at all. Find that balance, my friends. Find that balance between military spending and income it really is because once you spend your money you cannot get it back you you can you of course you can disband units but then if you finally suddenly self find under attack by a, a, a another nation and you you sort of had to get rid of your units because you don't have any money then you've sort of you've shot yourself in the foot basically so it really is important that you find that equilibrium between the two <coughs> now as you can see here we've got this we've got only 676 coming in here from tax income that is absolutely pitiful to say the least but our military spending our army upkeep is only 480 so basically the trade income is paying for army upkeep but again you're going to find that as you spend more this army upkeep is going to surpass your tax and trade income by a copious amount. The only thing that's keeping you sort of in check here is other. So 1650 is coming from diplomatic treaties, it's coming from bribery, blackmail, that type of thing. So you've got 2810 coming in, you're spending 480. So you've got 2330 coming in next turn. But remember, if you invest in military units, you know, that is going to sink like a stone, it really is. So be careful, my friends, what you're doing here in terms of your economy. Keep an eye on it at all times. Of course, your allies are Austria, which is fantastic to have, Hanover and Wittenberg. So two of your closest neighbours are already your allies. Now, you're not war with anyone. You've got trade on you with Wittenberg. Again, you want to be looking at to increase your trade as quickly as you possibly can. Again, tax levels. There are many of the council that promote absolutely taxing the the nobility more and lowering the the taxes for the lower classes. Some also say lower them for both to increase uh, uh, regional growth. Um, so the income from the town increases exponentially as you get or as time goes on. And there are other council members say tax both the lower and the nobility, um, not the highest point, but almost the highest you can possibly go to sort of really give a huge jump start to your economy, get that tax flowing in at the expense of growth. So 
again that's up to you my friends how you balance it out personally I lower the tax levels to try and get the tax uh, the the income the growth the regional world growth up as quickly as it can it'll take some time for that growth to come in but again that's the sort of trade-off you have here in between what you want to do then ministers now uh, Joseph Clemens the first Koenig doesn't give you any diplomatic bonuses but either you don't get any negative either so that's a very good start but your cabinet is not of the finest it really isn't so the Kurt von Banden Baden not very good at all here first lord basically your prime minister treasury again not very good at all same for the justice same for the army the best is your navy but you don't have a navy so in other words you've, your best cabinet minister is actually on your sort of on the naval well in charge of the navy you landlocked <laughs> you don't have a navy so you know to me that just seems completely at odds of where you're going to go my first piece of advice to you my friends is your treasury you need to replace the gentleman you're an absolute monarchy so you can move wherever you want into this you can just basically pick up this gentleman put him wherever you want so you've got uh, Sigmund Talbot here harsh reputation plus one to management minus one to lower classes again you're looking for someone who's going to boost your treasury then you've got here the second is Karl Ulmer oh definitely this gentleman here industrial revolutionary is going to boost your um, treasury management massively honest plus one to management um, my plus one nobility which is fine pious as well so this gentleman is definitely a prime candidate here patron and bonvoyant not really because again he's more of a naval man so this is Karl Ulmer is going to be your best choice here so you're going to want to move him into treasury and straight look at that straight away you're getting a plus two bonus to global income plus four to growth on the, on the trade routes and plus uh, four to, to town wealth um, sort of in the regions here straight away an already wonderful pick there and again you've got two other good very good Alexander Crozer and Sigmund Talbot here or Sig Sigismund Talbot so again if it was me personally I would definitely move towards putting he's got plus one to management here and we've also got six half reputation personally I would put uh, Sigismund Talbot in here in the head okay so you get plus four diplomatic relations that's where you really do need to get diplomatic relations high especially for the surrounding nations and then I would put Alexander Cruiser here in army and again look at that minus two recruitment costs plus two to land technology research rate and minus two to upkeep costs so again you've already changed the the dynamic here of not only your your different sort of um, st military treasury uh, diplomatic region but also your economy your economy will be boosted by those gentlemen being in here not straight away but eventually once they once these sort of these changes kick in it really will make a difference especially when you're recruiting and especially when your sort of your tax and your trade go starts to increase this is when the cabinet will make a huge difference trade here you're only trading with Wittenberg again look at the mean look at ivory it is off the chart but again you can't access it you don't have access to a port that's why it's so crucial that you pick your targets very very carefully and that's what we're going to be looking at next my friends now we already are allied here with hanover so again we're gonna have a look here hanover we're allied with hanover we don't have a trade agreement with them De without a shadow of a doubt my first sort of preference would be to looking at where you can get your trade from so you've got France hostile minus 85 so straight away you already know where you stand with France they are not in the best sort of frame of mind with you so again getting traded with them might be difficult if you get traded with them it might sort of balance out their attitude towards you but you've also got here the United Provinces now this is where you need to be careful if you need access to a port and you've got Hanover and Wurttemberg here as your allies you've got France who are hostile towards you you've got Spain here we're, we're at peace with Spain. Let's look at peace with Spain's attitude towards us, indifferent. And then you've got the Netherlands here, which are at peace with us. And again, they, the provinces, are indifferent to us. Let's have a look at their allies. Now, their allies are Austria and Great Britain. So Austria would probably either break, break alliance with yourself, or they would, st Austria would stay with you and then become sort of neutral in the conflict if you decided to go for the Netherlands but remember if you went if you attack the Netherlands you're going to be Brit bring Britain into the into the war and that is never a good thing to do believe me my friends it really is going to be brutal the decisions you have to make here are going to be absolutely brutal so again 
whom else can you move against? You can move against Spain, because they've got they've got Brussels here, but their allies are Bavaria and France. Now Bavaria are here, and you have a border with Bavaria, so they can move across into you if they decide to take Spain's side. They've also got France on their side, and they've got Strasbourg here, and the powerhouse that is Paris here as well. So again, picking your enemies, picking whom you want to attack is going to be absolutely crucial here, it really is. Now, there is one sort of nation that you could possibly move against here, which is Denmark. Now, because you're allied with Hanover, you can move through their territory. So you have military access by de facto, by default, because you're allied with Hanover. You could move against Denmark, but as I've just shown you here, my friends, they're allies with Poland and with Russia. Two but look at Russia. Russia's already a behemoth, a titan here. Poland, there's a f every chance that Poland will become equally as large because as they s after their battles with Austria, there's a good chance they'll do that. And they're trade partners with Hanover. So that, again, is really something you've got to be careful of here. Bavaria are friendly with you. So you could get trade with Bavaria. And again, that'll be land trade. So again, you haven't got to worry about any trade lines, but your trade will be closed off very quickly. Hanover, you've got alliance, but no trade with them. So again, you want to be able to pick your sort of trading partners very carefully. You've got Saxony as well, which are here, but Saxony are stuck between Prussia and Austria, and the chances of them getting swamped up and picked up very quickly by either one of these is very, very high indeed. So trade with Saxony might be short-lived. So you want to be looking at your near and nearest neighbors here. Um, so either looking at Hanover or Württemberg, maybe France if you if you wanted to, not so much um, Spain. Now remember, if you went for, for, for Brussels, not only would you have France as an enemy, and as Spain as an enemy, but the chances are you'd have Netherlands as well, because they would be looking to sort of unite Brussels under the Dutch flag. You could, again, go for the, for the Netherlands here and really sort of put a, a really strong army here and then move in against the, the Dutch here and then hope to hold... Uh, the Netherlands against any future British sort of enterprises against you because remember if the British wanted to take attack you they'd have to either move through Flanders they'd have to either move through Hanover I don't believe Britain have got any any allied no they're actually they're allied with Hanover so that means the British could actually land here move through Hanover Hanoverian territory and then strike Cologne through Hanover so again be very careful what you do here if you take out the Netherlands it's going to give you access to one of the largest single trade ports in the entire European sort of coastline as it were especially here in the in North uh, here in the North Sea Rotterdam was massive absolutely massive a powerhouse the Dutch were a powerhouse trading nation but it also give you access to huge facilities here within Amsterdam itself barracks already straight away and then the future barracks you'll be able to get from sort of having lots of research again another Utrecht here another school have farmland, you'd have uh, Weaver's Cottage, but most importantly you'd have Rotterdam. Of course you went against Spain, you would then be crossing the line and taking, not only would you get a shipyard in Antwerp here, but you'd be at war with France very quickly indeed, and of course they've got this region here. You could maybe take out one of your allies, but again your allies are protected by some large, larger nations here. So as you can see you've got Wittenberg, friendly, allies with Austria and, West and ourselves. Um, you've got Hanover, allied with Britain. So again, you have to pick, you, you're very, very careful what you do here, but you need trade access, my friends. You need a trade port as quickly as you possible. If it was me, personally, if it was me, and remember, everything I say here is just based on my, what I would do. It doesn't mean it's perfect, it doesn't mean it's the right, the only way to do it. <clears throat> this is just me passing on my sort of experience and what I would do if I was running, if I was sort of running this campaign. Personally, if it was me, I'd put an army, a very strong army together, and I would immediately sort of look at taking out uh, the Dutch here. You'd have to face sort of this small strike force here and a large, a large uh, sort of defensive force within Amsterdam itself. It'd be a very, very tough fight. If it was me, I'd probably wait to see what happens with this army. This might army might move against the Spanish. If it does, that's when you strike against the, the against Amsterdam. You could remove the Dutch before they take the Netherlands, uh, take, take Brussels. I beg your pardon. And then, if the if the Spanish hold off this particular attack from the Dutch, um, this army would be pretty much beaten up. Then you can move against Amsterdam before they really got themselves established here. And you then you'd have a massive trade port. And have a huge city, and you'd have this them close together, backed up. You'd have a already a good uh, trading come from Hanover and Wittenberg as well. So again, 
these are things all to consider really is my friends so as you can see you don't want to be looking at sort of geo global sort of um, uh, sort of positions here you don't want to be looking at s going into the new world you don't want to be looking going to India you don't want to be looking at you know extending into the sort of eastern uh, Europe or taking out Austria or moving against anything you want to be looking at s small individual things what is the immediate thing you need here as Westphalia a port and there are only th two or three regions nations that are going to give you that and that is Brussels Amsterdam and Hanover. Now Hanover is an ally with yours. Spain has a very powerful ally. The Dutch have a powerful ally in Britain, but it's over here. It's across, across the North Sea. So the best possible target you can possibly choose if you put an army together that is capable of taking the Netherlands and holding it is going to be Amsterdam because the port and the facilities are going to give you is going to be second to none, especially this early in the game. But remember in the campaign, but remember you have to also remember to increase your your sort of infrastructure, your economy, and also your trade as quickly as you possibly can. Um, I believe, my friends, we've covered everything here. I know that it's not sort of that huge sort of, as I said, that geopolitical and geo sort of um, that geo global sort of uh, nation here, where you're just you know you're able to snowball everything in your path. Um, because that's not what this is about. This is a single region nation. You have to treat it as such, my friends. Um, but again, then you can start looking at possibly if you take the Dutch, you can might be look at get to looking at Britain, and that becoming a part of Westphalia here, taking it, um, moving into here, taking Britain. If you take Britain, it'd be an absolute boon. It really would. Maybe even by a coup de main, which would be taking London, then moving up to Edinburgh Island. Or if you gain strength, maybe you could take out your allies here and, and sort of reunite almost a, a, a united Germany here. You've got Dresden, Berlin, maybe even mo moving it against Prussia um, later on down the line, maybe moving into sort of the Austrian states here and bringing sort of Germany as a whole together under Westphalian control. But again, that is for much, much later down the line. The crucial thing is to get to port for yourself so you can make the most of that sort of trade. But again, if you have Britain as an enemy, that trade is going to come under a severe amount of pressure because they're going to immediately start putting their fleets, um, their, their, their ability to have massive naval forces at your disposal just across the channel and that's going to hit, they're going to hit Rotterdam unless you can get ships out to sort of really counter that and that's going to be very, very difficult to do but my friends that is what you face when you have a single region that is landlocked but has but needs access to, to world trade that is the dilemma that is the problem we have to solve but my friends i hope you've enjoyed this particular sort of overview this nation's guide here of, of west of westphalia as always my friends please in the comments if any of you have played westphalia if any of you have played maybe wuttenberg i'm not sure if you've been able to play wuttenberg if you've played hanover any of the small nations if you've played westphalia please get down in the comments let's build that sort of depth of knowledge of the of the regions so that those who may be looking to take on the challenge of the sort of singular regions have uh, have a really good sort of core depth of knowledge from some really experienced commanders there out from out in the council so again my friends hope you've enjoyed this particular guide um, again let me know if i've missed anything out um, if i haven't sort of gone over anything please let me know my friends but until next time my friends bye for now